Welcome back to the channel, my name is Abel and we are back with Football Manager 2019 and Eastern Resurgence with Belena FC Dynamo and the start of Season 10 and if you've been seeing my last few videos you'll know that I've set myself a deadline that we have this season and next season to get into Europe otherwise uh, this will be the end of the save after next season so this may be the penultimate season of this uh, but this will be my longest series ever whatever happens but we have two seasons to get to Europe last episode we ended the league fairly poorly two draws dra drawing against Wolfsburg and then drawing nil nil with Mainz meaning that we ended up in 10th place just outside the top half which was a disappointing end to this season but this season we're going for that top half we're going to see if we can do it I spent I've spent more money than I have in any other season, but we still have loads. Like, we still have, I think, about 40 million, but I'm scared to spend it because I'm not going to blow, like, 10 million pounds on, like, a striker or a midfielder and end up paying him, like, 30 grand a week when our highest earn at the moment, I think, is on, like, 15. I, I can't warrant having such a big wage jump for our highest earner. Everyone else is going to want a deal. I'm going to end up with unhappy players. I don't know what to do. Uh, but anyway, we will kick off the new season today. Our game is, uh, first of all, against Eintracht Frankfurt away from home. Before that, I'll show you all the transfers. We'll have a quick look through pre-season and then we'll jump into the match. So this is how the season ended. You can see we won only one of our last six league games, but did not suffer defeat very much in the second half of the season. Only losing to Bayern and that was because of a 95th minute winner. Um, but apart from that, we didn't lose... Um, this side of the winter break so a good second half of the season the first half just wasn't good enough and then the last six games the running was very difficult but we only managed to win one of the last six so that cost us top half and now not a lot of our players were out of contract at the end of last season the only sort of first team player that was was Ricardo Marcuri who had a good sort of few seasons as the first choice goalkeeper for us Herbert Doom and Fabian Barr have also left on free transfers but um, I don't think these guys ever had first team games and they're both still uh, free agents yeah uh, so we've sold 2.6 million pounds worth of uh, players and the first one to leave was uh, Dominic Presthofer a central midfielder who has gone to Essia Altac in Austria so he has left for them at 23 um, but yeah he was coming to the end so I thought you know we need to improve on him which we have done and Benedict Hollerback, the right winger has gone to Turkey to Ankara Gucci and that fee is £375,000 um, a disappointing signing. I mean, I'm amazed that he lasted four seasons for us. A player that scored one goal in four seasons, which meant that only once did we get to use the hollow bat goal joke. Mats Kola has also made the move to Turkey to Balikasirspor. If I've butchered that, I'm sorry. He's gone for £1.7 million, but uh, with add-ons that could be 2.1. So, uh... Yeah, we'll see what happens with that. So far, he's played a couple of games for them already. And again, was a, a, a decent player for us, but kind of was always playing second fiddle to um, Saban Kier or I think Dragon Nurkic was the other guy that he was sort of behind. As again, he got the odd goal here and there. He got five assists last season. Um, but yeah, again, we just needed to improve on him. Leon Vitija, the Swiss right back, has gone on loan to the season at uh, Servet, a team in Switzerland. And Enestis Karatsiotis has gone on loan to AEK for the season, back to Greece. Uh, one of the worst signings I've ever made. He didn't score a single goal last season. He started five games, four off the bench. Didn't look like scoring. We spent two and a half million pounds on him and he's turned out to be absolute shit now we have 12 players that have joined the club some youth players some first team players we're going to go through them in chronological order and we'll start off with tom hendrix a right winger who's dutch he's 17 and he's come from groningen 500,000 pounds and some good sort of underlying attributes he's a promising winger got some good physicals he's already pretty quick he's got a good work rate he's a hard worker um techniques good good first touch decent with his free kicks good crosser of the ball for all we know, that's the basics covered really, that's all you need. Pasquale Fabri is a Swiss of attacking midfielder. Um, again, some good attributes, a promising midfielder, fairly determined. Uh, 15 dribbling, decent passer, good vision. Physicals again, pretty good, he's pretty quick. So again, a player that we can probably make use of very soon. £200,000 from Zurich. Uh, so this is the replacement for Dominic Presthofer. Gunter Burkhardt an 18-year-old midfielder. Uh, we've paid £4.5 million for him from Wolfsburg. Pretty hefty fee for someone who's just 18. But he looks good. Um, the ability, the current ability is good. He's fairly professional. He's right-footed, so he'll play sort of on the right of the midfield. Physicals are very good. Mentals, 
brilliant, very brave, good decision making. Some 13s in there are nice. A bit of backup in goal in the form of Benjamin Begich, who is uh, Swiss. Um, uh, 1.7 million pounds from FC Tun. And uh, yeah, for them, he was pretty good in the Swiss Super League last season. So he's come to us and again, Good goalkeeper attributes. Physically, he's pretty good. He's unambitious, so I think he's going to be happy just to be a backup, and he probably won't ever play. We also have Mike Kroner, who's um, more of a youth prospect than anything, and uh, he's come from Leipzig, £1.5 million. Again, we've got a lot of money, so I'm not fussed about spending like a million pounds on an 18-year-old who might never play for the first team. I'm not really too fussed about that. But some decent attributes in there again, some thirteens and twelves and nearly up fourteen in there as well. Very much gonna be a sort of a future prospect. Our other goalkeeper and probably second choice to Schossler is Marcel Sakura, who is a Slovakian goalkeeper. Uh, he's joined from Regensburg for £150,000. He was pretty good for them in the the Dreiter Liga um and was there for free. They've got 150 grand for him. He's very much going to be, again, a backup goalkeeper. We'll probably play Schrossler every game unless he does something diabolically bad. And then Stakura will probably come in. And then if we have like a massive injury crisis in goal, we've got lots of options. So I'm happy about that. Bit more cover in central midfield. Of course, we had Gnaush for a little bit at the end of last season on loan, but he didn't turn out to be very good. Yusuf Sell is in. He's a Belgian midfielder, 21, £1.9 million from Anderlecht. He spent last season on loan at St. Pauli, was okay. He's come to us, and uh, again, attributes look very good. He's resilient and he's hardworking. Three-star current ability, four-and-a-half-star potential. Physicals, very, very good. Balance, great. Fitness, great. Mentals, very good. Very hardworking. Good teamwork, decisions, brave. And again, technically, great technique. Passing's good. First touch is good. Good from corners. Looks like a very good central midfielder. And that's where most of this revamping has been done. Our midfield is almost completely changed. There's a few left over. It's going to be a new look midfield. More of an attacking midfield option. Afonso Sosa, who is Portuguese. He's come from Arosa in Portugal. And has been pretty good for them in the um, in the second and the first league. They got promoted and they seemingly stayed up. So uh, he's come in £675,000. More of an advanced playmaker. Again, the basic attributes, 14s and 15s there. Nice. Very good mentally. Physically, he's okay. He could be better. But um, again, he's he's pretty quick. A young right-back option here. Christian Matuk. He's at Polish. He's come from Arca. 13 and a quarter thousand pounds. Very little money at all. Just might as well be nothing. Again, some decent sort of attributes. He's enthusiastic. So teamwork's great. Work rate, very good as well. So again, just going to be a, a youth option. A uh, replacement for Max Kohler, we have Bruno on loan from Chelsea. The first time we really raided the Premier League. He's a Brazilian winger. Uh, he's got 16 crossing, 16 technique. He's pacey, he's agile. Mental's a little bit to be desired. He's okay though, fairly determined. And uh, yeah, him and Chaban Kerr are going to sort of share that left midfield option. Bruno, hopefully a good option for that left wing. A young striker option now, Ralph Ackner, who is an Austrian forward, 17. He's come from Austria, Vienna for £900,000. 15 first touch, uh, 13 technique. Physicals are okay. Mentals, some good ones in there. Flair, aggression, um, decent off the ball as well. Young striker, could be good. Might not work out, we'll see. And then lastly, one more sort of youth option. Patrick Vercoil, who is a Dutch right winger. He's come from Utrecht, £700,000. And uh, yeah, um, again, very much a sort of youth option. He's quick, and that's about it, really. Other than that, I don't think we'll ever see him. £12.75 million spent. We do still have over £50 million in the transfer budget, which I can't spend. There's, there's no way I'm going to spend that. Because, well, there's players we still need. We've got about a week and a half left of the window. But what am I going to spend on? We need a left back. We definitely need a left back. But oh, it's slim pickings. Full back is easily the hardest position to fill in your team. There's no doubt about it. Full back is the hardest place to sign players. It's really, really difficult. So I'm trying to find a player that can sort of get forward and put in crosses and that, but that can also mark and win headers. Because everyone that I'm finding... He's great, and then there'll be a thing like, oh, he's not good at headers, or he's not good at passing. So it's it's about trying to find like a jack of all trades fullback, and it's hard. So this is what's happened pre season. We had some friendlies amongst our squads, which we won 3 0. Uh, then we had a tour of uh, the Netherlands, which I sorted out, where um, we drew against Groningen. We beat Twente. You can see the goal scorers on the right. I'm not going to go through it in too much detail. Uh, we beat Zwolle 1 0. 
we beat Venlo 3-1 uh, and then we came back to uh, Germany, uh, thrashed CSK in Moscow and then we beat Braunschweig 2-0 and then in the German Cup first round we had Minos from the fifth tier in VfL Bremen. As you can see we played a very rotated side here. We won 3-0 away from home, uh, lots of youth players in here, uh, Zakiri, Pedersen, um, Ben Filter, Dressel up front got two goals. So uh, yeah, that's what happened there. You can see the goals from this on screen. Now Filter got an early goal in the 20, in the 16th minute. Uh, Dressel scored 10 minutes later to make it 2-0. And then uh, Dressel got the third goal uh, into stoppage time, 94th minute. Uh, we also ended the match with 10 men. Caribou, the captain and the most senior player in the team, got himself sent off uh, with two bookings in as many minutes. So uh, that's not particularly good. So he'll be suspended for the... Uh, next round of the cup where we're facing Nuremberg so that's going to be a bit more difficult and hopefully we can get through that a golden another little cup run we got to the semi-finals last season remarkably with an amazing sort of penalty shootout win against Dortmund which we didn't deserve but let's see if we can go on another little cup run here we'll give it a go unsurprisingly the media thinks we're gonna get relegated again but for the first time we're actually not bottom Paderborn are bottom uh, they were promoted alongside Stuttgart uh, relegated were 1860 and Hamburg. Okay, so let's jump into the match then. Frankfurt, a team that we've never lost against, fantastically. That's good. Hopefully today won't be the first, but we've won three out of five games against them. The other two have been draws. Let's see if we can get off to a winning start. So as you can see, our squad is pretty big, but I think some of these guys, they've still got some time left on their deals. I don't want to force them out of the club. So uh, we do have a pretty big squad, which we do, we do have like a lot of options. But this is our first choice squad, pretty much. This is our senior squad. Hopefully, it will be enough. Uh, we've got lots of midfield options, probably too many. We do still need a left back. Aguilar is unhappy because we've blocked um, a couple of moves. Um, and there's some offers in. As you can see, Magdeburg, Twente, and Hoffenheim all made offers. Um, we're not going to be accepting those, or he's not going to be going until we get a replacement. So, um, yeah, that's happening. Uh, Janssen wants a new contract as well. We're offering him. I want 4.5 million for him. As you can see, some sides in Turkey and Germany and the Netherlands want him. So we probably do need some striker options if we if Janssen is going to go. Tarnat as well has a 5 million release clause, but interestingly, him has sort of dwindled down. But this is the team that's going to play against Frankfurt. Schosser will keep his place in goal. The back four is Belskis playing as an inverted wing back. Rikuli and Dramac in centre back. Yannick at right back. Uh, Gil Baton retains his place after his decent spell at the end of last season. He's playing alongside Burkhardt, playing his debut. Uh, Haag is in that number 10 spot with Sabanker to the left, Akershot to the right. Tarnats up front as a lone striker, advance forward. On the bench, we have Kircher and Aguilar in defence options. Sal and Souza can make their debuts. Strebel um, in sort of a wide capacity. And then Andreev and Janssen, striker options. So that's the team. Yannick uh, is okay, I think. He should be able to play despite... Um, lack of fitness but that is the team all right let's hope for a good start to the season here we need a good first half and hopefully it won't mean a bad second half because it's very much a season of two halves for us last season we were not great in the first half and then in the second half we really kicked on and only lost one match so we need two good halves of a season if we're going to go for that top half let's get rid of these again and let's go back to the um formation and the um, action areas we'll put them up we're on balance these are our instructions that we have at the moment which you can have a look at if you want we're going to underlap because we have bells because says that and we're to wing back playing a bit more direct than usual i mean we're 20 minutes in and the first shot of the game has just happened Akershot coming forward here. You can see the camera angles change slightly. Akershot's gone all the way here. And it's a goal for Martin Tarn at 25 minutes into the game. And we break the deadlock. You can see the camera angles a little bit lower. It's a bit different. I think I'm trying to make it look like it does on TV. I can use the director's camera. But I don't really want the shots of behind the goal and that, if that makes sense. But Akershot making a run from about 35 yards out. Lays it off a of Tarn at. And Tarn at with a good finish. And we have the first goal in the game. I think that was our first shot. That was our second shot. Pass back with Saddam and his Dvorak. Thought he was more in a classical music than football, but never mind. Postalaki. He's not got a lot of options and he doesn't find one, but Sunjic has it back again here. We're not really clearing the ball very well. Tuminello. Come on. Oh, well won. We really pressured him there. Akashot. shot. And here's Fabian Haag. And can he put it across to Tarnat? He can, and Tarnat makes it 2 0. Two goals in about five minutes. Is Tarnat finally going to have a good season? He's been alright so far. I think he got six goals last season. And already he's got two and it's the first game. This could be 
breakthrough season for Martin Sarnat. Haag with the assist as well. I want a good season from Fabian Haag. And this has been a brilliant first half from us. 2-0 up in half an hour. We are well on top in this game and look good value for our 2-0 lead. Just keep it going. Get more goals. Go for three or four. We don't get very many big wins in uh, with this team like we, we'll get we'll score four sometimes but we'll end up score, conceding like two so we very rarely win by like more than three but we're looking very good in this game i'm gonna go a bit more positive and just really go for it because eight shots by frankfurt not a single one on target burkhard with another free kick here and oh it stung the hands of the keeper and dramach god that should have been at least on target that was a poor finish it's actually a corner i take it back i thought that was just a really bad miss yannick taking this set piece we're an hour in and it's header away. Burkhardt can go for this. Go on. Oh, it's hit a, it's hit a, like a big, there's a lot of players to get through there. Akashot put it in there. Okay, it's headed away. Ruiz with a throw in. Given away badly. Hag, is he going to go for goal? He is. 3-0. Fabian Hag gets, uh, I think, his first goal for the club. I don't think he scored for us. No, he hasn't. So that's his first goal for the club. We're 3-0 up in an hour. This is a fantastic performance. More of this, please. What a great start of the season this is. I mean, another mistake by the Frankfurt defence. Just giving it away from the throw-in. It's nice to that have that not happen to us for a change. Enough for us to take advantage. But we are 3-0 up. We're looking great. If, if we can make this, like, do this all season, we'll be... Again, oh my God, Tarnat is on a hat-trick here. He's uh, giving it to Akashot. Come on, put it back across goal. Oh, was that a shot? I don't know what that was. <laughs> God. Frankfurt are all over the place. All right, 66 minutes. I'm going to make a change. Baton's on that yellow card. So we're going to take him off. And we're going to hand a debut to Yusu Sal. Going to go back to balance. Just sort of play a bit safer for the last 10 minutes. Dvorak to Stenzel. See, if they played footballers rather than composers from the 1800s or wherever Dvorak's from then maybe they'd stand a better chance of winning this match. Postalaki, Barboza's on. Givaldi goes for goal and just drags it wide. Still haven't had a shot on target. All right, Kier's going to come off. Uh, we're going to put Andreev on on the left just to keep it fresh. And Burkhardt's going to come off. We're going to give a debut to Souza. Three minutes left. Uh, another free kick for Frankfurt. Headed towards goal. They had a shot on target. Wow. It took 87 minutes. Here we go. We could go up the other end and get a fourth here. Though. Look at the players forward. Tarnat. It's got to be a hat trick. It's got to be. Oh, he's hit the bar. Oh, that was your chance, Tarnat. That could have been a hat trick on the first game of the season. Gozlar's coming forward for Frankfurt. And again, easy for Akuli. Oh, that should have been a hat trick for Tarnat. That's unfortunate. And uh, almost at the end of the game now, just a few seconds left. Um, but. A terrific performance. Frankfurt were woeful. They were absolutely terrible. 5.5 for Ruiz at right back. And I think the whistle's about to blow. There it is. A 3-0 win to start the season. Away from home as well. Fantastic first game. Fabian Hall got man of the match. He got a goal. He got an assist. He had a great game. Let's have a look at our fixture list. Because we haven't really looked at what we've got and when. And when our really sort of tough runs are. So end of September we've got Leverkusen and Dortmund. But they're not the teams they used to be. They're very much mid-table sides now. Um, we've got Leipzig at the end of October. They're the champions now. We've got Bayern at the start of December. So it looks like the big teams are a bit sort of spread out as well. And um, we're at Hertha. Hertha are our, um, the game after next. So the good teams seem to be sort of spread out a little bit more, which I quite like. So I think we'll go to Nuremberg next time. We'll do the classic five matches played off screen. If there's any more transfer news, which I'm sure there will be, because we need a right back and uh, we might need one more striker. I'm not quite sure, especially if Janssen goes. We'll definitely need a new striker. But um, any other transfer news, I'll be sure to let you know. But anyway, that is going to do it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed it, do drop a like down below, leave comments. And if you want to see videos as and when they turn up on YouTube, do hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell to receive updates if I upload or go live. Follow me on social media so you don't miss any of my content. And I will see you next episode. We're going to be taking on uh, Nuremberg. And uh, after a really, really good first game, things are looking up. So we'll see if we can continue that form to the next um, live con and uh, yeah hopefully I will see you there thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon goodbye